In this video, you're gonna learn how to get the nice stride scroll effect on your framework website without writing a single line of code. Yes, framework is an absolute no code tool. You don't have to know how to write code and you can still create amazing looking and advanced websites just like this. So you're gonna learn how to use sticky positioning. You're gonna also learn how to apply scroll transforms to your frames. And you're gonna also learn how to get a nice distortion effect on your images with a little bit of workaround. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. Okay, so the first step here is that I am selecting this desktop breakpoint. I'm gonna go to the right panel to add a layout to it. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the gap to zero and I'm gonna also increase the height so we have some place to play with. Okay, I think something like this will be great. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do here. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna add to this desktop breakpoint is a frame. Uh, so let's remove the fill color because we don't need that. The width will be fill and the height will be, well, it doesn't really have a specific value. Just make it uh, big and nice and tall. Again, just to have some place to play with. And I'm gonna also rename this frame to section because this will be the frame of the first section. Okay, now that we have this, we can create another frame inside of this section frame. And we're gonna also remove the fill color of this frame. And I'm gonna also set it to fill, but I think we cannot set it to fill because we have to first make this section a stack by pressing this plus button next to the layout. So now it's a stack. Let's change this to start and the gap will be zero. Now we can go back to the frame that we've just created and now we can apply a fill width and the height will be 100 VH. Then I'm gonna also remove this to images. So inside of this images frame, we're gonna have the four image that will nicely move in as we scroll on the website. So in order to achieve that, we're gonna select the images frame and we're gonna change the position type to sticky. In order for sticky positioning to work, we have to set all parent frames overflow to visible. So I'm gonna do this here on the section. As you can see now it's visible and also the desktop breakpoint will be changed to where the hell, okay, here we go, to visible. Okay, so inside of this images frame, we're gonna have another frame that will have the four images inside. So let's create another frame and let's call this, um, let's say, images wrap, maybe, something like this. Remove the fill because we again don't need that and change the width to 1200 and the height will be 800. I'm gonna make sure that it's positioned to the middle of this images frame by pressing option H and option V on my keyboard. I'm gonna also make sure to deselect all these little pins. And now we can add all of our images to this images wrap frame. So I'm just gonna drag these in. So these are the images that we are going to use. Let's make sure that all images are inside of this images wrap frame. Okay, so now I'm gonna make sure that these are positioned the right way. Okay, something like this will work. And what we see on the Strides website is that these images are distorted in a way and we cannot do something like this in Framer, but we actually can. You just have to be a bit smart about it. So the workaround to actually get that type of distortion in Framer 
is to apply a loop effect for the image, set the type to loop, and I'm gonna, now I'm just gonna set this delay to three, so you'll see what's this whole thing about. I'm gonna set the rotation to 3D, and I'm gonna set the Y value to 60, or maybe not the, yes, the Y value to 60, because this is the distortion that I need. And um, yeah, the, the transition will be linear and the time will be zero. No, actually, let's set it to one, just so you can see what this does. So if we give it a preview, you can see that now this goes to this distorted state and then it loops back to the original state and starts again. So what we want is to remove this transition by going to the effect and here the transition time should be zero. So what we do here is this effect will happen immediately as we load our website. But now as you can see it goes back to the original state. That's because we still have the delay set to 10 or something like this. Maybe not 10, but let's see what we have. Yeah, we have three here. But what if we set a really, really big number here? If we give the preview, you can see that it will just stay there. It will stay like that. And that's how you get this distortion effect in Framer for different frames. So yeah, it's a bit of a workaround, but it works just fine. Another thing I'm gonna apply for this image is a perspective which is set to 600 and that's how we're gonna have the exact type of distortion that we are looking for. I'm gonna do this distortion effect for each images. So I'm gonna select this image, go to effects, apply the loop effect, then set the delay to a really, really high number and then uh, apply a 3D rotation and set the X to 60 or minus 60 and then just make sure that the transition time is zero. So now as you can see both of these images have the distortion and I'm gonna do the remaining images too. Okay, so now if you give it a preview, you can see that all images are nicely distorted just as we want them. So now all we have to do is to kind of position them in a better way because now this isn't exactly how I want them to look. So I'm just going to move the right image a bit to the middle and the left image too and maybe move them a bit more to the middle and then these to the sides. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, maybe we can move these to the fully to the edge of the frame. Let's see. Yeah, I think this looks great. So now all of these images are positioned exactly the way we want them to be positioned. Let's just make sure that these are in the middle of the frame. Let's give this a preview right now just to see what we have. So as I load the website and I start scrolling, as you can see, nothing really moves because this section on the top is set to sticky. And that basically means that it will stay there until we reach the end of the parent section. So as you can see, here we have the images frame, which is set to sticky, and it is inside of the section frame, which is, as you can see, really, really high. So until we don't reach the end of this section, this will stay on the top of the viewport. So as you can see, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And now as I reach the end of the section, these images are also getting out of the viewport. So this is exactly what we want. We want the images to stay on the top of the viewport as we scroll, but we also want them to nicely animate in. 
And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna actually just apply one simple effect for the images wrap container by selecting the images wrap and going to effects and I'm gonna apply a scroll transform. Okay, so this will happen on scroll and the from effect will be, let's say 0.3 opacity, the scale can be 0.5 and we're gonna set the rotate to minus 90 because we're not only want to scale in the images on scroll, but we also want them to nicely rotate in. So that's why the from will be minus 90 in terms of rotation. And the two effect will be opacity one and the scale will be something really big, like something like five, I think will be good. And the rotation will be zero. So it will rotate from minus 90 to zero. So let's go back to scroll transform and just apply a transition so it will be nice and smooth. And let's give this a preview just to see what we are doing right here. Okay, this looks great. The only thing you might note is, is that we reach the end of this section before the images disappear. So that's why we see them start moving up. So we can actually fix this by going to this section and just by making it a bit taller and higher. So let's see. Now it's better, but we need to make it a bit more longer. So let's see now. Okay, and now as you can see, it's perfect. I'm gonna also make this desktop breakpoint a bit larger right here. Okay, maybe I want to position these images a bit further away from each other. So I'm just gonna do that. You can play around with these values of spacing and stuff like that to get the perfect look that you are looking for. Okay, so now I kind of like how these are positioned. But now again, as you can see, as I moved these images around, again, I need to make the section a bit longer to have the nice effect that we're looking for. And now it's good. Okay, so the thing that we need to add here is the text. So as you can see, we have this section right here and we have the images here as the first thing in the section. So the next thing will be the text. So let's say scroll like never before. Okay, I'm gonna change the text font to Montaga because that's a really nice font. I'm gonna change the color to white. And I'm going to also change the size to, let's say 56. I'm going to put a line break right here, align the text to the center, and then make sure that the line height is a bit smaller, something like 1.1. Then I'm going to select this part of the text and change the transparency here to 50%. And let's see what we have right now. Now, as you can see, as we scroll, this text moves up, but the images are coming in nicely. And that's again, because this frame here called images is set to sticky. So it stays at the top of the viewport until we don't reach the end of this section right here. As you can see, this is a really long section. So this will stay on the top of the viewport. However, the text below that is set to relative. So it will move with the section. It will not stay on top of the viewport because it is not set to sticky. And just to illustrate that we are entering a new section after this whole effect ends. 
we're gonna have another section right here so i'm gonna just select this section right here and press command and d on my keyboard to duplicate that here i'm gonna set the desktop breakpoint back to fit content and here i'm just gonna make this section a bit smaller and then i'm gonna remove these images make this section a bit smaller and change the text to next section and let's see how this looks if we give this a preview the images nicely scale in and then we enter the next section so yeah this is a really nice effect by strides and as you can see it is really easily achievable in framer so yeah this is how you can actually create the strides effect on your Framer website without writing a single line of code. You're gonna find every single link in the description. You're gonna also find the remix link for this specific project. So you can take a look and see how it's built if you didn't understand something or you just wanna play around with it. So make sure to grab the remix link from the description and also make sure to take a look at the description at the other links because I'm gonna have a couple of useful links in the description for you guys that can help you learn Framer faster. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Make sure to like it and subscribe for more and I'm gonna see you in the next one.